Oh, look at this cute little car over there. You just don't you just want to scratch its 33 kilowatt hour battery belly. Uh, but but it's not just cute. It's actually going to be one of the cheapest electric cars in the world uh, that has a range over 100 miles. But of course, uh, there's a catch. I'm going to tell you all about it. Uh, how about right now? Are you guys good right now? Okay, all right, we'll, we'll do it right now. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. And of course, if this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, uh, let's talk about this little cute little bug. Uh, now, for, by the way, doesn't it remind you guys of the Honda Urban EV, which is kind of also a little cute little toy? Uh, so um, now this is uh, the company. Is, this is Aura. R1. The company is called Aura, and if you've never heard of it, uh, that's okay. It's actually a company that was spun off into its own entity by Great Wall Motor Company, Motors Company. Um, it, it's a Chinese company, and that's where kind of the catch really lies for most of us. And I know nobody is watching me in China because YouTube is actually prohibited there. I know I've been there. Uh, so, but anyway, so so these guys they already they already established uh, uh, auto manufacturer. They spun off a, a, an Aura brand, and they're finally coming up with uh, this uh, car. And it's gonna. Uh, here's another picture of it. Uh, no, that's not it. Here's one. Um, I'm, I'm sure the car is somewhere in that picture. <laughs> you know, only in Chinese media I I, I still see like girls next to the cars <laughs> when they actually publicize it on their global PR sites. It's, it's kind of alright, but um, so I'll leave this picture up for you guys. You good with that? Okay. So yeah, now just like I said, 33 kilowatt hour battery. So a little bit tiny, but it it should go about 150 miles of the real world range in there. They're advertising like over 200 miles, but I'm talking about that, like a real world range, which is pretty good. Now the 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 only thing is it's not going to go over more than 60 mile an hour, miles an hour, but which is which is still okay because it's like I guess it's just meant to be um, just to be driven in the sort of urban environment in like bigger cities where you're never going to reach speeds more than that. But but that's um, that is a, a drawback. Uh, but there's another drawback, and let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, before that, I just want to mention that this show and this channel is sponsored by X-Rack. And uh, these guys have uh, just been uh, recently added as a, as a sponsor. They basically offer a cargo solution um, uh, for Model X specifically, but other electric cars as well. When you don't have you know, roof space for it, because as you know, a Model X, for example, has a, a Falcon wing doors. Um, so essentially, this is like uh, the roof rack for your vehicle's hitch. Um, the prices are pretty reasonable already, but they are offering discounts to our community uh it's in the description of this video but also with that code you will get free shipping so check them out as at xrack.us and again uh, the link is in the description of this video all right back to this little cute little guy now after all of the incentives chinese incentives just like i said it's being sold in china as uh, that's the catch i was telling you about uh and you know the, the question is really you know it looks like companies like this will not anytime soon if ever uh, be open to exporting these cars to European or North American markets, uh, mainly because you know the regulations are much stricter there, and we don't like our cars catching on fire, you know, being unsafe, and a lot of other things. Um, and of course, here you can file lawsuits, really big lawsuits against against big corporations and automakers. Well, in China, the whole world is very different, and then they they can actually get away um, with making cars that are not up to our standards in terms of safety and regulations and stuff like that so th this brand may never ever make it outside of china but who knows i'm just saying that you know uh, maybe we won't be able to drive this car but because other manufacturers global manufacturers will have to compete with this car in china maybe that will push them to come up with more affordable cars for the rest of us see, see where i'm going with that anyway i hope you do because i think this is still a good thing um now uh eighty five hundred dollars after the incentives uh, however there's a news uh, this week that there is a word that china is going to be cutting down the incentives as a matter of fact they it looks like they'll be cutting down on those uh, next year 2019 by about 30 percent which is decent i have to say um and then they're planning on getting rid of them like all at once by 2020 which is kind of weird because their original plan was 
to get their economy and to their uh, automotive industry to all electric by 2025. So that's kind of premature, if you will. So I, yeah, I'm, by the way, here's another picture of the car inside. Uh, looks pretty cute, just like, I mean, it's like exactly what you would expect what that car would look like inside, right? So, so that's pretty cool. Um, but it's, uh, it is definitely uh, a, a good thing. Um, I think this is pushing everybody into, you know, into to cheaper cars. But I'm just wondering, will Chinese economy and automotive industry will stay the same where they just make cars for themselves and it's just for China? Or, um, you know, and, and exceptions, of course, uh, you know, companies like Byton and Lucid and so forth, where they either have investors or just headquarters there, but they're still planning on being a global brand. Um, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely good for everybody. And, you know, that's a pretty good price. Um, if you ask me, of course, the challenge will be to get to that price when ex incentives are gone at some point. But the technology is going, you know, fast enough where I feel like that that's going to happen. Let me know what you think. Of course, I, will, oh, before, I just want to give a shout out uh, to one of my new Patreons, David Lemieux. Thank you so much for becoming a Patreon. I haven't had a new one in a while, I don't know if you noticed, but thank you to David. Um, he's joining uh, my community on Patreon. That's where you can watch me live, um, have some of the other behind the scene uh, uh, pictures and videos. Uh, and this is just helps me you know, pretty much survive as an independent YouTuber um, now that I'm full time. So thank you so much, uh, David. If you guys are interested in becoming a Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash electric. That link is also in the description of this video. Anyway, let me know what you think about that car and about, you know, cars in China, particularly whether or not we're benefiting from it or actually it might be hurting our autom uh, automakers. All right. I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.